welcome, welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Just finished a long night at the gym. So that's something you still do all the time, eh? Every day. Every day. How's the gym going? Um, Featherston is, um, well, you know, we're just a little small country town. Yeah, but it's intimate, but it's really cool. Um, and on a Thursday, we have three classes. Got, um, under 12s and then a beginner's class and then the fighter's class. Wow. And um, the kitchen table is a thing? Is that something that fits in with the uh, Featherston? <laughs> the, 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 how you I, run your business I work, as well? I work from the kitchen table. But thank you, Dean, for the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big thanks for Dean and Actual Vision for putting this on for us so that we can promo our show. Um, so let's get into it. Um, Mana FC, you've done seven shows previously here in the Wairarapa, but now you're taking it to Tamaki Makoto on Anzac Day. Why the big change? Uh, um, Mana FC is a, is a great show. And it is its point of difference is the full tie rules, and also that it's um, a show that embraces um, tikanga Māori, and um, yeah. So I'd, we we kind of wanted it to take it out to Auckland because big smoke, um, great fighters up there, um, and just take the opportunity up to the big smoke. Really, I think. Yeah, so, um, what, Mana FC, where did the name come from? Um, my husband, I think he'd probably be um, a better person to answer that. Why did we name it Mana FC? Um, well, I suppose, yeah, we have, we've, we, we, it fits in a lot about how you run a gym also, but it also it symbolises who we are. Um, we got married on our marae. Um, we, I work for my people, Victoria works for our hapu, Ngāti Hikitanga, and so, you know, our show and our gym are extensions of ourselves, and so we just thought, well, um, that's our point of difference anyway, so let's just, let's just embody that through the show. Um, uh, mana, you know, when we put that word mana to our show, it means that it comes with a whole load of principles and values that I don't need to tell you about. Um, those principles and values are part of our culture. Our culture is a warrior culture, and with that comes things like in the English language. I suppose we could explain as respect and honour, and um, it just that's our point of difference. Is that a lot of other shows out there would be uh, more about hype, and our hype is around the, the warrior culture. However, it's things like little things where we like with standoffs. You know, we 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 encourage our fighters in a standoff to not disrespect their, their opponent. We encourage our fighters to respect their opponent, to respect the gyms they come from and the families they come from. And we believe that that um, that the corridor that we give to our fighters um, in the pre-fight talk, those types of things actually bring the best out of. The fighters. Um, before we get into the card, um, you were the former president of NZMF. You're now the national coach of the NZMF Black Gloves. Okay, and um, so this show is a NZMF event. Yes. We're going to have both pro rules and IFMA rules. Yes. Can you give me a, us all a little bit of background on what the difference is? Uh, the IFMA rules are fully padded. Um, it only the IFMA rules is focused for the for the juniors and for the eighteen to twenty two year olds. So it's um, it's so that we can run these tournaments, so like the world championships, with very minimal um, injury. So we need to be fully padded from the head gear to the chest pad and the shin guards as well. So it's full tie rules but with a whole lot of padding on. Um, the pro the pro rules will be full tie rules, no padding of of course. And three threes. Nine minutes of full tie rules. It's gonna be cool. Yeah and so I think um 
You've ran the, when was the last time you ran a full tie rule show in Auckland? Um, Club three hundred and Ants was the um, main event on on that show as well. Um, he fought the brother Tay Ulufunua from RRA, uh, and that was an all four tie rules fight night as well. It's not easy to do it in Auckland. Everyone um, in Auckland. Albeit that we, uh, the Auckland is where all the cream of the crop and where all the great fighters come from, really. Or maybe I'm being biased because I am from Auckland. But the elbows is not common. And uh, so K1 rules kickboxing is where it's at up in um, Tamaki Makoto. So just trying to take the full Thai rules, bring it back to Muay Thai and have it up in Auckland. Yes, going back to uh, Te Ulufunua there, that's coming full circle for our brother Ants being the last show and now again. But also Tay's son's in the black gloves and Tay's also one of our coaches. coaches. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. And Tay's also Lolo's nef- nephew. Wow, and we don't need to go on and explain who Lolo is. So yeah, yeah that's really awesome. And that sort of, I, I suppose that says a lot about that, that Auckland fight scene as well. Um, the Auckland fight scene it has a lot of whakapapa of our fight community and the fight scene comes out of it. So, yeah, we're really excited to go back there and no doubt there'll be some of those um, pioneers and um, of our sport. Yeah, and Lolo's so, definitely going to be there. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and I would imagine that he'd probably bring Sifu. So so special. Fingers crossed. That would. That's what makes it special. And for us, in terms of money, FC, I know that for myself, that I, it would be a privilege to have them there and to acknowledge them, especially on a special day, Anzac Day, and um, what that means as a you know, um, for not only our nation but as warrior culture as well. So, and without fear of the Jew, let's get into the card. We'll get to the main event at the end. First fight up. Um, like the first four fights is an IFMA fight under IFMA rules uh, Lamesa Abdul from D4G and Patience Leo Wada from Smack. Hey. what can you tell us about these two fighters um, both very young teenagers um, both 110 to 120 kilos so super heavy um, but Lamesa is trained by Singhi um, who also is a smack champion, one of my old boys, and Patience, um, his dad teaches boxing at Kingdom Fit, um, and he fights for Baby and Sammy at Smack Gym in, in Auckland as well. So a fight where you sort of got um, a bit of aroha on both sides in this one, eh? You know? Yeah. So just hoping the best for both of them. Yeah. Anyway. I think you get that anyway because... We, um, our sport becomes generational and we have all these connections and come from the same lineage so you are going to get um, those fights where you feel a little bit of aroha to, to both the fighters and I think this is, it's the same for these boys and I think they're going to cut and raise a great fight heavyweights, super heavyweights and yeah, no South Auckland South Auckland, oh wow <laughs> okay, enough said yeah, enough said <laughs> uh, the next fight on the card um, another South Aucklander here, Anton Cecil from Lance Stance yep. Hortara, uh, also in the Black Gloves team, yes. uh, versus Seamus Tioka from a gym that's close to both of our hearts, Sepuku Muay Thai from Levin, Horofenua. That's, um, if you don't know, that's where we fuck a papa too, and that's our ancestral home. So, um, what can you tell us about this fight? Um, both these boys are extra, extra strong. Um, I've known Anton since he was younger, younger. Those Cecil boys, they're all great fighters, aren't they? Um, and Seamus, he's hungry, and he too, like, they're both very, very strong boys. So um, I, I, I think we can ex- expect a real cracker from that, that fight. Yet again, like the first fight, got a lot of aroha on both sides of yeah. this yeah. one. So, yeah, just hoping that again, and no doubt it will be just a great fight. Yeah. Um, the next fight, um, we've got uh, Kale Burke mm-hmm. from um, the Combat Centre, who's another black glove. Yeah. 
versus our own Jack Hancock from Smack Featherston. Yeah. So what can you tell us about this one? Uh, both boys, um, yeah, they're very clean, technical, tidy fighters. They're light, so you expect a, a fast fight. Um, but I know that I know for sure. Like for Jack, he he trains the house down. He's not going to leave any stone unturned when he comes into the ring for Kale, and no doubt um, Kale will come to a party as well. So, what can you tell us about Kale's gym TCC? Um, big establishment, big, um, great gym, uh, great trainer, Vinny Mahoney. A, somebody that I grew up in the sport with and a, a former champion himself and, and and they've got lots of tools in there to use like Mecca Jean's there she's a great fighter, love her um, and they've got plenty of fighters for uh, for Kale to practice with Jackie Boy has us <laughs> yeah. Two of, yeah, two opposite scales eh? you've yeah. got to train different but yeah. you make use of what iron we have in our little job yeah. nice um, okay, fourth fight on the card. Um, someone that most that many of us wouldn't have seen fight much, Ethan Wang from NZ Sander. Um, Ismoros again versus Ronan Cowan from Smack. So what about these two? Um, little Ronan, and not so little anymore. Um, I think he's 17 uh, or 18. Um, Girl, like I think he started fighting when he was like ten or eleven. I'm sure, quite some time because he was at the gym before um, I moved down to Featherston. Um, but he's fighting Ethan, who his Sander background and NZ Sander are trained by Masood um, from Iran, who is a world champion three times, world champion and a Lumpini champion too. Is that an IFMA world champion? He's an IFMA world champion, but he's also won, I believe, gold at the World Games. Oh, wow. So, so um, yeah, he knows how to fight. He knows how to train kids up for these, th this wall set too. So, yeah, so IFMA world champions, when, we, when you speak about that and you bring that into it, as someone who knows the game, that actually means a lot, doesn't it? And World Combat Games means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who are some of the former champions? Um, well, Yotz and Klai is a former champion. Um, but for IFMA, I mean, like we do, you can start with Valentina Shevchenko. She's a good friend of mine, but also a great fighter. And she started in IFMA as well. Um, well, that's where UFC picked her up from. And Joanna is also a world, IFMA world champion. Um, so, so many. I don't, I don't know where to even... Andre Kubelin, he's... Uh, um, yeah, so many. So, Cosmo. Cosmo was an IFMA world champion, I'm sure. Well, before I get into the rest of the card, while we're on this IFMA stuff and we'll stay there for a little bit, who, are, who from New Zealand has been in that New Zealand Black Gloves team while you've been a part of it? Um... Well, my brother Ants was selected as um, at, for one of my first nationals. So when I was a part of it, my first national, first nationals that, um, or my first national team, were uh, Izzy Arasanya was in my team. Dan Hooker was selected for the team. Slava was in the team. Um, my sister Baby, Ricky Campbell, Alapatia Four, rest in peace, my bro. Um, oh, so many names. So, so many names. Um, myself, um, and also my sister, and... Many gold medalists? I, I think um, our strength comes from the junior categories. So in one, in one outing, I think we got 16 medals in. I think eight or nine of them were gold. So plenty of wow. gold medals. Well, yeah, for one of them was, was um, the reason I know this because he's from the White and Upper. Oh, Zane. <laughs> Zane Hotman. Yes. And he's also one of our coaches in the team again. He was at a coach last year. He's not coming year. now. Oh, he's not coming. I'll stay. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, it, uh, yeah. But IFMA is, uh, is your own, just know this is really close to your heart, IFMA. And that, you know, um, I know you put a lot into it because I live with you and I see it. And so it's really good to see this fight show kick off with that. I think a lot of people, um, when they think that of the pads and the headgear and uh, the chest gear, that they tend to think that um, it may not be as exciting or uh, that. But as we know, as from going to IFMA and seeing it, that um, that it's just as exciting. And if not, because of the gear, <clears throat> fighters are willing to give a little bit more, mm. push hard. It's mm. about coming forward and about going hard. So um, I, I think it's really awesome that you've put this on the card and that, that it's going to start this way. Um, but let's move on to the next, our first full tie rules. We've got um, another D for G fighter, Sam Katoa. Um, fighting another seppuku fighter, Iwani Tawatheka. What can you tell us about these two? Um, all I know, I've seen these boys um, previous fights or training videos. I've seen both of them, um, their training videos and their previous fights. And they are, that they have experiences in boxing. And they've got immaculate hands, both these boys. And I think Yoani goes to the CrossFit gym next door to Seppuku. So he's super fit. But he's also had corporate fights. So both of them have had corporate boxing fights coming together now to try out kick slinging. Well, and, and jumping straight in the yeah, deep end. Yeah, and jumping Full straight. Tyrus. And so, yeah, again, strong fighters come from strong gyms. Um, and because, you know, we look after Sepuku and we, we have a really close connection to them. Um, so again, another um, sort of like sit back and watch a fight. Don't know who to go for. Just hope that the best man wins. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I suppose we'll get to it later about the um, who their trainer is. Yeah. He's also fighting on the show, right? Yeah. Okay, right. Nice. Okay, the next fight. Um, James Little from Outlaw Gym. Versus another one of our black gloves who was with us over there last year, Caden Tawa. What can you tell us about these two in this fight? Um, Caden, he's stepping into the senior ranks. So he's 18 now. So we took him last year, remember, as a 17-year-old. So now he's 18, he's in the adults, and he's fighting James Little out of Outlaw Gym. So Cirillo is still around and still training his um or training his fighters out there in Pukekoi. So yeah, they're gonna they're gonna have a great fight. Um I think no, wrong fight. Yeah. No. Deep South. Deep Pukekoi. South. Deep South. Yeah. So we got the um, They're Manu almost Dewa. Waikato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so say so, uh one's um the dirty south versus the deep south. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um Next fight on the card, another D for G fighter, Tipani Paul yep. versus a CKB fighter. No need to talk about CKB. We all know who that gym is and um, and what their many champions mm. and high profile fighters they have there. But this fight is Josh Hansen. So what can you tell us about Josh and Tipani? Um, I don't know much about the boys. All I know is that, like, when, when I moved down here, Singy moved to CKB, right, um, to for his PFL journey. And, um, you know, CKB have their systems, and I think this will be quite a technical fight because of that. Singy worked under those systems as well. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Full tie rules will really be like a... Also, though, will sort of... I suppose anything could go either way in this fight. It'll like um, one thing we've I suppose we've learnt something that I've definitely learnt is that it doesn't matter what the fighting rule sets are. It's the fighter that generally it's the fighter who applies the rule sets the best mm. is the one that will do well. So that is a really exciting fight to watch. Um, so stoked to have CKB on this show because not only yeah. are they a great gym, the whole lot of great fighters, our brother and sister are there, and they always support shows really well. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> great team. Next fight, um, we've got a City League R fighter, Johnny Love, 
versus uh, our Sepuku MTT uh, Muay Thai fighter. Now this is this is Chris Scanlon. He's um, been out for a while. He's also the coach of Sepuku, and he's a, got a bit of a story yeah. behind him. What can you tell us about Chris? Um, well, first of all, Chris is Billy Scanlon's um, nephew, um, Greg's son. So, and anyone that knows fighting history know that the Scanlons can fight. And I think Billy was, I'm pretty sure, um, in that first generation, um, first champions of New Zealand. Um, so, after that top tier, whereas it's Lolo and Wayne, um, after Sifu, and then comes the Billy Scanlons of the world, and, you know, all the other boys, John Conway. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that's fighting is in Chris's blood, and um, at 22 he was diagnosed with cancer, so that forced him out of the ring and into another big fire chemotherapy. But he has been in remission for, um, I believe this is his third year, so he's coming back. Um, but Billy left him everything as well when, when Billy passed away. He left him all, all the gear. So he had his gym set up. So as soon as he was well enough to set up, he set up a gym. And yeah, now he's got all these kids training under him, alongside him. And um, so I'm really exor- excited to see him back in. Um, Hone, I know, so he, he's Harley's little brother. And he's always been around. Um, he fought as a kid too. So this is going to be a great fight. I'm pretty sure both these boys are not fighting in their weight category that they're supposed to be in. So I think these boys are more cruiserweights, but they're both fighting at heavy. Oh, it, like, going back to Chris a little bit, you're someone who also overcame cancer. Yeah. And you had fights after you overcame it. Yeah. So did it change your how you approached fights or your world view or how you went into it? Or was the, everything just the same? Um, I think everything was just the same. I that's all I wanted to do was go back to normal, or go back to not being sick. Um, so yeah, and I also just wanted to prove to myself that I could still fight. And I think Chris is probably going through that as well. Wants to prove to himself that he he can still do this. And yeah, so he's actually he was a heavyweight. He lost about um. 30 to 40 kilos to his illness so yeah um yeah and so you know we, we we've got a soft spot even more so because it's Levin um where we're you know where we're from where Ngati Hikitanga is so yeah that's really awesome I suppose you know um we're just seeing that little gym um he's the only fighter in that gym yeah. And yet now they've had a few fights and they're doing pretty well for the yeah. gym coming out of Levin. So um, maybe a bit one eyed <laughs> on that. But hey, that's what you get. Um, the next fight, we're getting to the, the real business end of the night yeah. now. Um, this fight, it could be a, a main event on any in other itself. fight card in itself. Um, Zion Perry from Warrior Training Academy might not be that well known to Aucklanders but for us down here we've seen him come a long way Mm. Um, technically really sound great Thai skills versus someone that um, we've seen on the King of the Rain ring stage another former black glove Um, I see he's at CKB now and but a great fighter in Alejandro Telles. What can we expect in this fight? Um, Zion is the sort of fighter and big ups to their team because we've seen him as a novice fighter and he has done nothing but grow, you know, and go from strength to strength in his fighting. So he's on an upward um, focus right now. He's, he just wants to get to the top of that weight category. And Ali, well, you know, we all seen Titus um, and what um, Tehipuki, his original gym, what they're capable of and how Daryl trains his boys in Muay Thai as well. 
and I think he will still take a lot of that um, flavour that he will still bring it to that fight I, um, all his old vocab that from his old coach I think that will come through and then coupled with um, the, the great things that they do at CKB I think he's going to go well I think they're both going to I don't know I, didn't, I wouldn't blink yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose um, Alejandro, you know, Tipuki has come from there, got a great grounding and background, and now we're going to see the new Alejandro yeah. from CKB <clears throat> um, having all of those amazing sparring partners. Yeah, we'll, lucky. We'll, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that fight. I think to me, it's the one that really sticks out, um, and I think those are two names that we're going to hear a lot about as we go into the future as well. Um, our co-main event, Eddie Lenhart from Outlaw versus Saran. Now, um, Saran's just coming out of an awesome um, Arsenal X performance. Um, so I suppose he's just hit that sort of national level where people are now recognising him and stuff like that. Where do you see this fight going? What can you tell us about Eddie? Um, Eddie's quite experienced. I think Eddie, um, I, like uh, with Cirillo's gym, he Cirillo opened his gym, I would say probably a good 15 years ago. Then they had a slight break, and then they've come back again as Outlaw. That um, Cirillo's gym was originally ETK Pocky, and but I think in that time Eddie has been with Cirillo all that time, so he's had something like almost 30 fights. Um, well, yeah, something like that, 25 fights. So for someone with such experience, we haven't really seen him. But then I've gone through making his reel, and I've seen some stoppages. I've seen his, he's been on King of the Ring. Um, he's also been on, there's some uh, some other CSN um, footage there with, um, with, with knockout uh, photos and footage. So I think he's a bit of a powerhouse. I think he's a bit of a dark horse, and I think with Saran, Saran's a beautiful fighter. He, I think he just can't afford to make any mistakes. Yeah, Saran's too slick, too fast, but also with that can sometimes come a bit of a slip, and that's where fighters like Eddie will come through. They'll just they'll hop on that opportunity, and um, yeah, it's another blinking, not required, uh, not recommended type fight. You know, it, it's um, I suppose you know you've got uh, Baby Sammy and Ansu's fighting on the show. Yeah. Also surrounds coaches, <clears throat> so he's got a lot around him as well. And I suppose that's something that I've just seen in our own gym is the is is the levels up that they've had over the last few years. And Saran yeah. is, is sort of the most obvious that the, we can see of that coming through. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> good segue to the main event. Yeah, yeah. Lee Cara versus our brother Ants Natson. Um, Lee, yet again, is a, is a cousin, is someone that we have a lot of respect for, mm -hmm. him and his gym. Um... He's been around the game for a while. Um, Ants, everyone knows who Ants is pretty much. Um, had a break from the fight scene. Has come back, um, but has also spent a lot of time coaching in the background. These two old lines, what do you expect to see in this as our main event? Um, yeah, I think we'll get... Um a bit of a, a a showcase they're both great fighters they both um for lee taking this fight um it's probably like when ants fought say sean sullivan in boxing or ensign you know there's just so much respect there but they want to take the opportunity to you know to add that person on onto their cb and i think um lee will be working on you know he'll be working hard in the gym um, to to beat a big name like Ants Nansen. Um and like we know we get sent daily videos of what our brother's doing as well, and he's working very hard. And um, 
Uh, I think people will probably think that Ants is not suited for Muay Thai and Full Thai rules and because he's such a kickboxer and a, and a K1 legend. But in actual fact, um, I think, you know, we both know that Ants can Muay Thai. He can throw elbows, he can knees, doesn't mind the clinch. Um, he's quite comfortable in there. So, yeah, excited. And, and we know, I suppose, too, is that... Um, Lee sort of comes in as a dark horse, you know, and I think you said it, he's fighting someone who he's, he's looked up to. And I, and I kind of get the feeling that we've seen glimpses of Lee, but I, I, I believe he's going to bring it in this mm. fight. I think we're going to see a great fight. Mm. Um, two warriors that I truly believe will embrace the sort of the ethos of Mana FC. Yeah. And um, so I'm really, really, yeah, looking forward to that main event. Um, so, how can people buy their tickets? How are ticket sales going? Um, VIPs are done. In fact, I've had people asking, another table, another table, but ABA just don't have enough tables to cater to these people, so we've just shut shut the door on the tables. So thank you to everybody who's taken out VIP tables because we can only fit a, a certain amount in the ABA. The GAs are going like hotcakes out the door, online event booking. Um, that's probably the best way to do our tickets, general tickets, is online. Generally, people like to pay for things on online at their, in their own time. And so, yeah, event bookings is, um, and under Money FC Anzac Wars, two buttons and you've got um, the ticket platform and then you can buy them online. Yeah, how quick do you expect those tickets to go now that they're the only tickets? Um, I would say that by even the weekend, um, there will only be probably 50 tickets left. So they are going out the door um, fast because they are the only tickets that people can get. Um, yeah. But if they can't yep. get to the fights... Um, um, they can watch it on CSN, something that we haven't done before on Money yeah. FC, but um, we've met with Oz and the team. Yeah, and, how cool are they? Yeah, and I suppose um, that is something, it's something with, with my background and my family's background and that sort of space, to actually sit down with them to see how transparent they are about it and how much that they're actually investing in our sport. Um, I'm really excited about our show we've just signed a three fight a free promotional deal with them which essentially is them just giving us stuff and we just put on our shows mm. so yeah well, yeah yeah and then, um that's definitely the uh, a big push to subscriptions thing is about csn is that they put in so much now what happens is if it if we don't support it it just goes because like a a lot of our things that we can have in our sport we need to support it and make sure that it still happens so that means getting the subscriptions and promoting it sending them out to our families here and overseas they need to see the fights because let's face it no one wants to watch a shitty facebook live I mean, you get really annoyed at them um, and if you really care about the fighter you want to watch them on a on a good camera and you know with good commentary not on sort of like um yeah far away facebook lives and but for csn um yeah really really proud of what they do and um really looking to push um a, a good partnership with with them um in promoting our show here and abroad so another funny thing in this fight scene um, Oz is one of your former students yeah <laughs> just, <clears throat> just um, yeah so another really interconnected thing and to see what they're doing I'm really stoked um, I suppose you know they've got the two options of subscriptions yeah um, one, one which is I think it's $89 that works out to like what 7 or $8 a week yeah. And then they've got the and seven to, day option. to watch all fights all at fights. CSN cover, right? Yeah, it's all fights at CSN covers, that's right. And then they've got the seven day option around $39 or something like that. 
and where you get to see the one the show you want to see but there's also an opportunity to go and see their whole catalog mm. of shows that they've done um and yeah i suppose i just seen that message you sent out to the chat group about encouraging not to do lives um and to support these people and so yeah i'm 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 really stoked um let's see how the show goes hopefully our providers bring it and um hopefully that we can see some really good things happen not only for money fc but for csn and whatever the house happens and all the other people out there in the fight scene hopefully uh, all the fighters bring their best everyone uh, gets through injury free and that um we honor not only ourselves our whanau those who went before us our gyms but also all of those fallen soldiers that, yeah. um, that their stay stands for um, and those people who went and served for our country Money FC next Thursday and Zach Day. Uh, thank you all for watching. Um, once more, where can we buy tickets from? From Event Booking. And if you can't make it there or you're too late to buy those tickets, go get a subscription on CSN.